Cine Youth the most unique film festival of the year? And why do you think it's even more relevant as though, as those 22 years and under are entering the cinema sphere? One of the things that really makes Cine Youth stand out amongst a lot of other film festivals is that it's typically the first festival that these filmmakers are participating in. And because of that, I think it brings with it a, a very unique energy that sometimes is hard to find at other festivals where it's established networks and um, sort of different professional groups. But here at Cine Youth, they're so eager to learn and connect with each other and the audience that it, it has a youthful energy to it. You know, everyone there is excited to meet, make new bonds that continue well beyond Cine Youth. There are many examples of Cine Youth filmmakers collaborating together on work uh, after they've been exposed to each other's work at the festival. So it's a great proving ground. And in that sense, I think it's, it's a really unique opportunity. And then just having it back in person again, you know, last year was still very exciting and people were so eager to participate. And now that we're back in person, that energy is doubled. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to have the filmmakers there in person to talk about each other's work and to see what everyone else is up to. So what highlights of the fest can potential audience members look forward to? And what special presentations are you most proud of as a festival director? Sure, there are, um, there are a few programs I'm really excited about. Uh, this year, like a personal favorite is the Late Night Thrills program which will be uh, after our opening night presentation of the Chicago Shorts. This will be so 9 p.m. on Friday night. And that is a, a very eclectic collection of films, one of which involves a wolf who discovers a skin suit of a businessman out in the woods and then turns into that man and becomes a corporate wolf. Um, so it's a husk of a man with a wolf's heart and mind and inside of him. So that one I haven't been able to stop thinking about. So I always love pointing people in that direction. We also have a really beautiful collection of films in the Searching for Home program, which is a program that highlights the intricacies of the immigrant experience, both in documentary format and in narrative. So it's a collection of films about finding home in your new home and the sort of growing pains that are associated with that. So that's a, a really beautiful program. One film in particular in it that I would like to highlight um, is called The Days We Will Not Forget, which is directed by a group of young migrants from Africa who are taking the opportunity to narrativize their experience who traveled solo um, from Africa to Barcelona. So that's a really unique film because it's both functions sort of as a hybrid documentary of their journey and then also a very poetic exploration of the way the journey made them feel. As a film observer of more years than the youth participating, how do you think the technology of the last 20 years has affected the quality and accessibility of filmmaking to younger folks? I think one of the biggest things is that the young filmmakers are much more media literate than they may have been 20 years ago or even 10 years ago because of how rapidly everything is changing. So in that sense, this is a noticeable trend. So I've been doing this for four years and I've noticed this rapidly developing even just these last four years, sure. that the quality level keeps getting much higher at a younger age. So that curve is starting to be flattened in a way in the sense of, you know, typically we expect the thesis films from colleges to be rather slick or to seem like they had a crew but even some of these, you know, one person productions by filmmakers, 14 and 15, they're, they're clean, they look professional, they have interesting ideas. And even beyond that, even if they're films that don't look like they have a high budget, they have ideas. They, these filmmakers think in images, you know? So there's lots of interesting formal things that certainly when I was that age, the shorts I was making didn't resemble in their, in their clarity. You know. What is the difference in, your, in the point of view of a child or teen, almost in a cinema verite sense, versus someone who has seen the world for more years? I mean, do you notice that in, in these films? I do. And I think that oftentimes the films that ring true to us are 
when filmmakers of this age are reflecting on their immediate environments or relationships, you know, every now and then we'll get submissions that have a cast of um, primarily older performers. And sometimes it's interesting and it works, but, you know, very often at Cine Youth, you're going to find beautiful films about family, about friendship, about growing up, about the world they live in, the world that they want to change and how they want to go about changing it. So because of that, you have the, you know, a socially conscious group of youth who are very energetic to change the world. And they're also then media literate and, you know, using film as a way of doing that. So I would say that they're, they're very intelligent in the sense that they focus on things that they know well. Um, and because of that, it's a different set of interests that you'd find from filmmakers in their 30s and 40s and beyond. Uh, so it's, it's unique, unique work. In the arts, there is a concerted effort to respect individuals and their self-identifying orientation. How does society gain from this in your observation? And why do you feel there's such a backlash and scapegoating of identity in other parts of society? Sure, I think, you know, one of the missions of Cine Youth is to address the inequity in film production and in the film industry. And I think one of the most important steps in addressing that gap is to respect and acknowledge these identities and the way that people identify as filmmakers and as artists, because so much of that honesty and truth that comes through in their work comes from meaning them on their terms um, and respecting them as individuals. So I think that that is something we place a lot of importance on as a festival because the only way that that gap in equity in film production can be bridged is to consider the climate, consider the filmmakers and consider their comfort so they feel included um, and not to make it feel as though there is a normative trend that need, they need to conform to in order to feel as though they can participate in a film festival or in the film industry. The goal is to make them feel welcome and acknowledged um, for who they are. Okay. Finally, what is your best pitch to the child in all of us so that we can get an advantage uh, as an audience participant? Yes. Sure. Well, you know, whenever I do a class visit for Cine Youth and talk up to young filmmakers about, you know, oh, should I submit my film? What kind of movie should I make? My parting wisdom to them is always just to be weird because when you be weird, you're typically being yourself. Um, and that's what gets our attention. So in terms of audience members, I would say you're, you'll be exposed to some wonderful and exciting films that ring true because the filmmakers are being themselves. And sometimes that means being weird and having fun and exploring the world the way they see it. So I would say to audiences as you know, their inner child, come explore some divergent thinking, come see the world in a different way through the perspective of youth creators. This is Patrick McDowell for HollywoodChicago.com, copyright 2022.